So I thought we would go through the process of making a custom part. First we draw and design the part in 3D and get it ready for printing. The 3D designed part gets converted over to code. The code gets sent over to the 3D printer and we start to build our control panel. This is the finished product still on the 3D printer. Here's the finished control panel after a 16 hour print. I'm printing this in PLA plastic. This is the, what they call the raft, basically the uh, foundation, the support that we use to build the rest of the panel on. Of course that has to come off, so it's going to take me a couple minutes to get all that foundation, that raft off, so that I can get to the bottom of the control panel and start putting in my gauges, valves, other things that are going to go in this control panel. It takes me a little while to get all this stuff off, but it makes a nice, nice print afterwards. I got to cut some of these grooves and things like that that are a little bit harder to get to. The 3D printing uses these knockoff columns so that uh, they can be used to build things on top of them so we can make wedges and grooves and that type of things that otherwise need to be supported. There you go, finished control panel. Got a few more little things to clean off. No big deal, turned out nice. Nice thick control panel. I'm gonna take in, clean up a few of the little holes that have to uh, be just the right size for the components to slide into. So we'll just take a normal little file, my little Leatherman, do some test fits, and do a little bit more filing until that Quick connect just slides right in there. Perfect. Test the little release. Wonderful. Everything's looking good. Pop that back out. Test fit some of the other components. The truck that I'm putting on, putting this on, will have an airbag system for an overload system. So one of the components will be this air gauge made by Airlift. Uh, goes up to 200 psi. We'll never, never get it up that high, but slide that in. Fits perfectly. Uh, it's got a little retainer ring on the back that just screws down with two little screws. Kind of holds it in from the back side. That fit real good. So, the air ride system comes with a manual valve that uh, raises and lowers the truck by adding or releasing air. So then we're going to go with a dual USB from Rugged Ridge. Just snaps in there. It's the same size hole that the light switches use, so that's convenient. I'm going to turn this one around. I wanted to put that cover on the other side so it doesn't get in the way of my quick connect. So there's those. And then we're going to put our connect back in. I'm going to point the release towards the air gauge. Snap that right back in. Great. Now the only thing I have left is to put the, the 110 receptacle. Got this little guy at Lowe's. Came with a cover. It's, a, it's an outdoor receptacle. Uh, I kind of modified it. Took the parts I wanted to make make this work on this control panel. There you go. Everything goes together nicely. Covers it up, keeps the moisture out. No problems with trash and stuff like that getting in your 110 receptacle. And there you have it. There is our built control panel, 3D printed. Everything's got little covers, clean.
Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe for upcoming videos.